Hey there, it's Brittany Chambers and I am back today with this beautiful mix from Jesse James Beads called Market Basket. We're gonna make two pairs of earrings. These are probably not super beginner friendly earrings, but there are techniques that you can learn um, and use in your own projects. I was particularly in love with this bead, but it wasn't the color that I wanted it to be for the project that I wanna make, so I decided to paint my bead. Um, I'm just using some generic, um, acrylic paint today. I have several different colors. I have brown, green, um, pink, and you can tell these are old. I've been using these forever. You can get them at the craft store for probably 50 cents to a dollar. Um, yellow, white, and a blue that matches one of the flowers in the mix. Um, I just got out a paper towel, and what I'm going to use today as my painting utensil is a dotting tool. This is what I use um, on my artisan beads as well, and you can tell she's well loved. I am just going to grab a head pin, and this is how I'm going to hold my bead while I'm painting it. Uh, it's super easy, keeps my fingers out of the way, and I can rotate the bead as needed. Now, you, as you can guess, you don't really need a whole lot of paint for this bead. You can use a paper plate or little dishes to pour out your paint. I'm just going to use my paint caps because there's more than enough um, paint in each cap to paint with, especially using a dotting tool. So now that I have all of my caps open, I'm just going to start wherever wherever you'd like. Um, now, there are so many different ways that you can paint this bead. You can paint it all one color. You can just relieve it by rubbing paint on it, and it'll bring out all these amazing details. I'm actually going to be painting each and every flower on here. I'm not going to show that during the video, but I'm going to show you how I do it. Um, so I started with yellow because I love sunflowers, so I'm making the sunflower pop. And I'm just gonna take the smallest part of my dotting tool, dip it in my paint each time, and I'm gonna just paint each petal. Now, this is tedious. I hap happen to enjoy it. <laughs> but um, if you don't like it, just grab a paintbrush, paint over your flower, um, or just kind of go a little bit more abstract than just painting every single petal of the flower. Because these flowers are so tiny, um, they get finished pretty quickly, but overall, um, I would suggest making sure you have some time to dedicate to your project if you're gonna paint each flower individually like this. Um, another good tool to have on hand is a hair dryer or a heat tool. I can't find either of mine, <laughs> so I was just relying on these paints air drying. So there is the outline of my sunflower. Now I know the bead is brown itself, but it's not the right color brown for that center of that um, sunflower. So I'm just taking the larger end of my dotting tool because it covers more surface area, and I'm just rubbing that in the middle, and I'm going to make it a little bit more precise with the smaller end once I've gotten my paint where I want it to be. So I'm gonna flip my dotting tool, kind of just fill, fill in. And as this dries, it should melt into the details of the center of that sunflower. Okay, and I'm just using my paper towel to clean off my, um, dotting tool between colors, but also it gets all over my hands and everything. So be, if you want, you can wear gloves, um, but you, this washes off with soap and water. Next, I'm gonna take my pink and I'm gonna cover this rose. Now it's gonna be a little different than um, the sunflower because I'm not really going in to the cracks. I kind of want that to show a little bit. It's okay if you get the, the paint in there, but I want to show the detail and that brown is really helping me show most of the composition of this flower. All right, so our pink flower is finished. Next, I'm going to come over to this tiny one here and I'm going to use this pale blue. And to stay super consistent, I am going to put the middle of every flower except for the sunflower as yellow. But you, you can make your own fantasy flowers. You could do purple and lime green and teal, whatever you're looking for, but this is looking, I wanted it to match the spring market mix so that we have three flowers done. Um, next, I am gonna go, I'm gonna go again with the blue. I'm 
and I have a flower on the bottom. Can't ignore that flower on the bottom. I'm going to make that one blue as well. Okay, this one going to go with pink. This larger one, I'm going to do yellow on the outside, white in the middle, and then um, yellow in the very middle. That flower is finished. I'm going to go blue on this one. And then we have some calla lily looking bee or calla lily looking flowers here. I'm gonna go white on those with yellow centers. And then we're going to tie it all together with some green paint for all of the leaves that are on our flowers. And here is my finished bead. Um, she's very lively. I need to let it dry for a few minutes and then I'll be back to show you a tutorial using the bead. Okay, so this whole time it's been on a ball head pin. I'm just gonna keep it on that ball head pin and I am going to wire wrap a loop at the top. So we've got a loop. I'm just gonna hang on to that with my pliers and take another pair of pliers and wrap that around. This could also turn into a pendant if you don't wanna paint both of your uh, flower beads, but I am making a pair. And then I am going to take this rondelle from the mix, this floral bead cap, and this rose gold um, rhinestone spacer. And I'm going to take some 24 gauge wire, do a small wire wrap at the bottom. And slip that onto my floral. It looks like a floral Easter egg now. <laughs> but um, I'm just going to do a quick wire wrap here. Just a couple loops. Making sure they're not too messy. And we'll trim off that tail. I'm just going to slide on my rondelle, my head, or uh, my bead cap, and my my spacer, and then I'm just going to do a loop at the top. If you want to put a pearl on there, another smaller bead, go right ahead. You can make these totally your own. I'm just going to do a loop in there, secure that down, and then do a couple wraps. Grab an ear wire and smoosh that on there. And here we have a really cute floral painted pair of earrings. It'll be perfect for Easter and spring and anything you want to wear them with. These would look so good with a little sundress. I love them so much. Um, and then we have one more pair of earrings that I'd like to make. Now, this was a um, one of the beads in the mix, and it can be a little intimidating because it doesn't have any traditional holes. It has a hole through the middle, but no holes through 
the um, flower uh, to make it a um, connector. So I'm just, again, gonna take some 24 gauge wire and I'm just gonna pick up a flower petal and I'm gonna put my wire between these two and then hook it around this petal, okay? Down toward the base of the petal. You don't want it in the middle, you don't want it at the top, you want it toward the base. And then I am gonna wrap that wire around itself. You can twist here, you could just do a regular wire wrap, whatever is easier for you. But we want it to be snug up against that petal, okay? So I am going to cut off my little tail And bring this up. You, you can bring it up towards the side, toward the middle. It's going to be a little finicky, but that's okay. And I am going to put on this beautiful faceted coin that was in the mix. And I am going to wire wrap that. And then I still have tons of wire left. And then we'll just do that same technique around a petal um, further down from the, the uh, of the flower. So let's see. I'm gonna go with this one, but I'm gonna come out the center and I'll show you what I mean. I'm just gonna do that same technique, come down around the petal. that in there but instead of twisting right in the middle of the flower here we're going to come toward the right hand side of the screen and do the twist there or just regular wire wrap but make sure that's tight in there and you're it's not wobbling around If you're newer to jewelry making, this might not be the easiest thing, but definitely practice. There are four flowers in this mix and uh, you, you'll you get it. Practice makes perfect. Or I had a math teacher that said perfect practice makes perfect. And practice makes permanent. So, and that was sixth grade. <laughs> that stuck with me. Um, let's see, we're gonna go ahead and cut that off. See how it's in the middle since I did that off to the side? And then we are going to wire wrap on our little dragonfly. I tried wire wrapping the dragonfly first and that did not yield the results I wanted, so we will do it second. There we go, it's hanging right there. Hang on to our loop and then just do a few little wraps. And we'll trim. I've got a an ear wire. And our loop is facing front to back and we need it to be facing side to side. So we can just change it a little bit. And here we go, so pretty, so ready for spring, so cute. And I think these two are just the perfect pair um, to be made with that market basket mix you can make so many more pairs of earrings because look at all the beads that are left over. Um, if you're interested in this mix, I will put an affiliate link in the description of this video. Um, affiliate links help the channel, help me keep making content, and I hope you learned something through today's tutorial. Stay tuned for Goldie. She's super cute. Have a good day. Bye-bye.
Grammy got Goldie a new blankie for Christmas and she loves it. Yeah, you love you blankie, huh? You're such a cutie. Did you just wave your feet? Oh my gosh. Look at these arms. Goldie, you're such a cutie. Hi, Goldie.